Essie Bernal, Stephen Kernow, Corey DePooter, Kelly Fleming, Matt Kector, Daniel Mauser, Danny Rohrbach, Dave Sanders, Rachel Scott, Isaiah Scholes, John Tomlin, Lauren Townsend, Kyle Velasquez, my beloved 13. I recite their names every day, and each day I recite their names. I see their faces looking upon me. I'll never forget them. April 20th was like any other day except for the fact that I was about to leave for a conference in Pueblo that day. So even when I was told that there was something happening at Columbine High School and started watching the news coverage in my office, I was really thinking more about leaving for Pueblo. It started in like a normal day. I'd gone to a couple classes in the morning. I was sitting in math class. I was in choir class when the shooting started. I was in the library and was studying for a test. Warm sun, cool air. Uh, I remember it was normal. And as she did every morning, she poked her head in the window. She flashed me the I love you sign. And I sat in the car and watched her walk into the school, disappear into the school, and that was the last I saw of her. on the radio that something was going on at Columbine High School. They weren't sure what, but something was going on at Columbine. 911, what's your emergency? Um, apparently there's been a shooting up here at Columbine High School. Okay. okay. We've got people on the way. Do you have any more information? No, I don't. I got about to say 20 kids here at my house. I just found the way. Okay, you're at 6895. What? I had overheard somebody in an office say uh, something about stupid kids at Columbine, and I poked my head in and I said, my dad teaches there and everybody just turned white and they pushed me out of the room and they said you need to to call your mother. I felt that if there was problem a problem at Columbine, Daniel wouldn't be involved in, in any problems. And and there was two thousand students at Columbine, so what are the chances that something would have happened to him? First thing that crosses my mind, it has to be a senior prank. I just thought it was a senior prank. It was near the end of the school year, so I thought maybe a senior prank was happening. And didn't think anything of it uh, until I heard a, a louder explosion, which turned out to be a pipe bomb. So I waited with the radio on, and they broke out, and they said, um, OK, shots are being fired at Columbine. The announcer at that time was sobbing. He said there had been up to 30 children killed. Next thing I heard was kids were just fleeing from the building. Every day during a lunch, which started about 11.20, I'm usually down in the cafeteria supervising and talking to the kids. Well, that day I was in my office, and the reason I was there is I was getting ready to offer a teaching position to Kiki Leva, who was on a one-year contract, and we're sitting down to have a conversation. And before we could have that conversation, my secretary runs towards the door, and the door was shut, and there was a little window, and I can still remember her face planting in that little window. She opened the door and she said, Frank, there's been a report of gunfire. I had been there for 20 years and I could count on my two hands the number of fistfights we had. And she said, bombs are exploding. And so I run down out of my office thinking it's senior prank, seniors misbehaving. But then I, my worst nightmare became a reality because from me to about 100 yards, I saw a gunman coming towards me. Everything slowed down and certain things were magnified. And then I remember glass breaking behind me and the sounds of shots being fired. And I kept thinking, this is what it was going to feel like to have a bullet pierce my body. We 
didn't really think anything of it um, until the teacher ran in and told us to all get under our desk. Jefferson County 911. Yes, I am a teacher called by high school. There is a student here with a gun. He has shot out a window. I believe one kid has shot. Um, um, I've been Columbine shoulder. High School. I don't, I don't know what's in my shoulder. If it was just the last one, too, what? Um, okay, has anybody been injured, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the school is in a panic, and I'm in the library. I've got students down under the table, kids. Heads under the table. We kind of got up from where we were sitting. It took maybe a couple steps, you know, two, three steps. It's just that distinct noise, you know, gunshots, um, if you've been around them at all. And we heard the poppy noises getting louder and louder, and I realized it wasn't a prank. Oh, my God, that was really close. That just rattled me. Okay. Okay, Jefferson County 911. Yes, I am a teacher called by high school. There is a student here with a gun. He has shot out a window. What's your name, ma'am? Patty? Okay. Oh, I, don't, I have him in the library shooting at the lady that I have in the library on the phone. I had adrenaline rushing through, and I kept thinking, I just want to live, I want to get out of here. Um, I had pulled a chair up, um, thinking that it might cover me or I could use it as a weapon. I don't even really know why I did it. Uh, I just felt trapped and the sound from the gunshots was um, bouncing off the walls and so it sounded like it was coming from both inside and outside the building. I looked around the, the corner of a pillar and I saw uh, the two murderers. When I first saw them it was surreal. I knew who they were, didn't really know, necessarily know their names but you know, recognize them. And the library was the first room that the shooters came into. Immediately they're shooting off their guns. I just saw, I don't know, I guess his, his silhouette, if you will, and then the, the rifle starting to lower. I tried to jump down when he saw me and I was hitting the lower left side of my back and then he immediately fired um, a couple shots that went over my head. There was four of us at our table, two of my fr good friends, and then um, Brittany, she was a, a friend as well. When they came into the section that we were in, they came up from behind, so I laid on my side, in, I guess, and th thought that if they shot our direction, you know, wouldn't hit Brittany. And then I was basically peering over my shoulder. I don't know why, I just had to watch them, because I didn't want them to, if they were gonna shoot me, if they were gonna kill me, they had to look me in the eyes. They would, uh come over and make fun of a student or taunt a student before they shot or killed them. They came over to where I was, they saw Isaiah. Isaiah was one of the very few black students in, at my school. One of them called the other one over and they started to make him racial slurs at him. Um, they pulled him out from underneath the table. The last thing that Isaiah said was, I want to see my mom. That period of time seemed like an eternity. We all felt felt like we were in there for it, what seemed to be about 45 minutes. Living it back, even going through some of the memories, it still feels like it was longer than 11 minutes. Uh, the whole time I was just pretending to be dead. I was just being very still. And I was lying there in their blood and um, I thought I was gonna die. They were starting to make their way through the library I had circled around to the other side of the, the librarian's desk and went into one of the footholes um, where the chair would go. And um, as they were making their way around, that's where I hid and I pulled the chair up to just try and hide a little bit more. That's when they came, um, after a while, back around to where I was at and they saw me. And one of them yanked the chair out and kneeled down and that's when he put a gun to my head and, and asked me, why shouldn't we kill you? I said, look, I've been good to you and everyone in the school and you know it. And um, the one that was close to me started to stand up, lower his firearm and his facial expression changed. And he turned to the other one that was standing behind him and said, you can, you can kill him if you want. And I was the last student to talk to the two murderers before they ended up committing suicide. Somebody in the uh, one section to the west got up and I could hear him running and somebody saying, let's get out of here. I yelled at everyone, let's get out of here, I think they're gone. I heard 
Someone asking for help, I turned around. There's a girl rocking back and forth underneath a table behind me. She had her, had her shoulder blown off from a shotgun blast, and she's rocking back and forth asking for help. So I helped pick her up, and a, a group of us ran out through an emergency exit, and there's a police car outside. And we all ran behind the police car, and as soon as we got behind that car, the two shooters came back into the library and started to exchange gunfire with the police. It took a long time to get a hold of my wife because the phone lines were so tied up. I found out from her that Daniel hadn't called, so it didn't seem like he had escaped. I went to Leewood Elementary, and nothing was happening. We didn't get any news when we were there. And at one point, they asked the parents whose children hadn't been accounted for to go to a separate room. And in that room, there were counselors. home and they were in front of the the TV everybody was on their knees in front of the big screen TV um, trying to see if they could see him running out of the school and we saw the sign uh, one of the helicopters had zoomed in on a sign that said one bleeding to death and I remember my mother just I mean she she just started sobbing and she said that poor student that poor student and we found out later that that was about dad he was bleeding to death behind that sign. I remember climbing on top of a fence, looking in the bus windows, hoping I could see my daughter. And uh, when the last child got off the last bus, we pretty much knew that she wasn't going to be there. Got home, just went running out of the car into the house phone was ringing. I picked it up thinking it was Lauren. They said, Doe, this is the Boston Globe and we want to comment from you. And what, do you. what do you want to comment from me? And I said, please hang up. I'm trying to keep this line clear. I'm waiting to hear from my daughter. And then my phone was just incessantly ringing. So I turned on the television and I started witnessing what everybody else in the nation was witnessing, waiting for a phone call that never came. Daniel would be 35 now. We, we think he would have gone into something like medical research, somebody sort of behind the scenes using his math and science background. But frankly, I try not to think too much of what Daniel would be doing, what he would be like. I, I pretty much focus on what his life was like for those first 15 years. It's, it, it's, it's just too damn difficult to look at what things might be like if he was alive. One thing that scares me um, is the fact that I have two, two kids. And what is, what, how am I going to handle them going to school? I don't know. There's times where I say, I'll be okay with it, because realistically the chances of happening are slim. Um, and there's other times I don't know if I can handle them being in a school. Life goes on, you know, and not for everyone, but for the living. We need to remember the, the people who didn't make it that day and help the ones that are still here. And that's really what it boils down to. If you would have asked me on April 21st or even in 2000 if we'd still be talking about it, I'd have said no, especially Columbine. Um, you know, there have been shootings since, but the one common school shooting comes up even 20 years later is Columbine. The focus on Columbine has created this 
worldwide phenomena that, that's deadly. Unfortunately, the word has a stigma associated with it to the rest of the world. The word itself is a positive word. Columbine means dove-like. It actually represents peace. So what's a symbol of peace has become, unfortunately, a symbol to many of violence and tragedy. You hear on television, you hear on the radio, it's a Columbine-like tragedy. Right after Columbine, people wanted to be better people. People wanted to be better moms and dads and brothers and sisters and neighbors. We want them to remember how they were that way. Not the horror, but how they were better people. We want Columbine to be known as when things changed. I hope we figure out a way as a country, as a society, as a world to keep it from happening. I, I don't know the answer. If you were to ask me why Columbine happened, the biggest thing, it's, it's not bullying, it's not the medication they were on, it wasn't bad parenting, it wasn't the school, uh, it wasn't lack of gun control or any legislation. It was them. It was the two shooters and the choices that they were making. And if you were to ask me the biggest reason why, it was because they, they saw nothing but negative in this world and in themselves. I think there's you know a lot of denial about it. I think we, we all want to say, well, well, look at the good stories that come out. Look at, look at what so-and-so has done. And isn't this wonderful? That, but you know, we're, I think we're still hurting from all of this. Because in, in the case of Columbine, we, know we can call it an incident. We can say what a tragedy it was. And, but you know, when it comes right down to it, it was murder. We had children murdering other children. And, and we have a tough time explaining that. How could that happen? Why would that happen?